Good afternoon. Afternoon. Hey. Good afternoon. All right, so we're on to examples from Chapter 12. Okay. So let's start with 12.96. All right, 12.96, it is not uncommon for the night sky temperature in desert regions to drop to negative 40 degrees Celsius. If the ambient air temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, and the convection coefficient for still air conditions is approximately five watts per meter squared Kelvin, can a shallow pan of water freeze? Can the water freeze under windy conditions with a average convection coefficient of 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. So we're given then shallow pan of water, right? It's got the night sky. We have the temperature of the sky, negative 40 degrees Celsius, T infinity is 20 degrees Celsius. The average convection coefficient is five watts per meter squared Kelvin. They want us to find Can a shallow pan of water freeze? And the second that thing they asked is, can the water freeze? if windy. And we have a new convection coefficient for windy conditions, 10, versus five for still air. Assumptions. Our analysis. Okay, let's do a schematic here. All right, so we have our pan. Got some water in it. So that's the temperature of the sky. Up here we have, right above the pan, we have our T infinity and our convection coefficient. And then we'd have the surface temperature of the water, right? All right, and that's the pan on the ground. All right, so where do we start this problem? We want to figure out if this shallow pan of water is going to freeze.
say we want the temperature of the surface to figure out if it's going to be zero degrees below zero degrees Celsius for freezing or above the zero degrees Celsius and not freezing, what would we do? Where would we uh, begin? Do conservation of energy. Yep. Okay. So let's make our boundary. I'm going to pick the water here. All right. So we have CUE, and I'm going to use just the plain wall version of CUE. Okay, so we have our COE. We can make our assumption that it's steady state. Nothing generated. So then we got to figure out what we have is our energy in and energy out. And I like to have the schematic tell me, right? So what do we got to label it as our energy in or energy out here? What forms of heat transfer are occurring on this water? Uh, just the radiations. So we have radiations, okay. So we need to figure out, I want to label each of them that we would put in the COE. Okay, so what forms, or if there's a different types of heat transfer, what I need to label on here. The absorption coming in and the emissivity going out. Okay, so we have what's going to end up getting absorbed. So we have. We have the sky is emitting, and that then hits the surface, and that's irradiation then coming into our water. Okay. Now we have emission coming off. Any other forms of heat transfer here? Convection? Yeah, we got our convection here too. I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on this absorption part just to, as I get questions on it. So if we had zoomed in on this water, And we said we're taking the absorbed part, right? So that's what comes into the surface, right? Well, we have the irradiation that comes in and part of it gets absorbed what would be the other things that could occur? If you have, ir sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, reflected and transmitted. Yeah, so then we would have, we could have reflected, and then we could have the transmitted, which makes its way through, right? And if you're gonna label a schematic, you want to either label this one, this one, and this one because, uh, uh, for conservation energy because you're gonna be left over with then the absorptivity because that's the energy that ends up making it into that surface, okay? Or 
like we have above, you just label the absorptivity portion, right? So let's see what this means again. So G comes in and it either gets reflected, let's say it's G atmosphere in this case, but it could be any G, let's just leave it as any, and transmitted or absorbed. Okay. All right, if you make cancel some things off, so if transmitted to zero, that's opaque. All right. Actually I'll actually I'll I'll get not do that yet. If we just cancel G out of each of these, you have one reflected plus transmitted plus absorbed, right? And then if we can do that. You know, if this transmitted is zero, that's opaque. Okay, so that's just showing you, you know, irradiation comes in, reflected, doesn't actually make its way into this surface to change the energy. Transmitted just goes right through, also doesn't make its way into this surface to change its energy. Okay, the ad, what ends up being absorbed is what's changing its energy, and that's why. As was said, that's the part that we label on our schematic of the water. Or you label the other three and simplify it just to the absorbed. Okay. So you just don't want to double label and double count energy is what I was getting at with by showing this, this other part. All right, so now we can take our schematic above and just put in what is energy in. So we have the what's coming from the atmosphere in, and then convection and emission out, right? Okay. All right, we'll take this one step further. Put in our equation for emission. Emissivity, Stefan Boltzmann's constant, temperature to the fourth, and then our Newton's law of cooling. Okay. Take a look at what we know and what we don't know. We know T infinity. Okay, so that's the air just above the pan of water. We don't know the temperature of the surface of the water. We know our constant here. We don't know emissivity. We don't know the irradiation that's coming in from the atmosphere. And then we don't know the skies, the absorptivity of that sky irradiation. Okay, so we got a few things here. We're ultimately looking for temperature, so that means we need to figure out our unknown so far. Okay. So we'll first focus in on this one, okay, irradiation from the atmosphere. Any ideas for that? So this is a new one. So we have, this is what's coming in from the atmosphere is G, the irradiation that's coming in from the atmosphere. Well, <clears throat> this portion is coming from the sky here. The sky is emitting. It has emission, right? The clouds and that, the clouds, they're emitting. And that portion is what ends up coming and um, 
getting absorbed by the pan of water. Okay. So if we think of this is our irradiation and think about what where that's coming from, the sky, well the sky we can say is emitting like a black body. That means this is a black body. Okay, and we have basically changed it to the the emission of the sky, which is emissivity, Stefan Bolson's constant, temperature of the sky to the fourth. So we're going to say our assumption the sky emits as a black body. Can you explain why we're making that assumption again? Okay, so we have, when we're looking at our schematic, we have this G, G atmosphere coming in. So that's the irradiation that's coming from the sky, right? So you have irradiation coming in and in, in hitting the surface, right? That's what's coming in, the radiation that's coming into a surface, and it's but it's coming from the sky, right? So that means it's leaving the sky, and then the amount of irradiation that hits this is the uh, G atmosphere that hits this pan of water, okay? So we're basically saying the sky emits as a black body. Black body uh, is just this, right? Black, or I can just leave sky out of it. So any black body is just temperature the fourth of that black body is the emission. So that's what's so the sky is, we're saying the sky is emitting as a black body, and then the portion of what that gets, of that emission that hits the surface is the radiation, and the portion that gets absorbed is the part that is being influenced as energy into our pan of water. So the other portions are getting reflected, they're not getting transmitted because it's a pan, so there's a back side of it, okay? Thank you. Yep. Oh, the other, I, I missed one thing on this is we labeled this and I said we labeled everything. The other part was that we needed to say that it's well insulated at the back side, at the bottom. If it wasn't, we would have conduction, right, between the whatever this pan of water is sitting on and that surface. All right, so with this equation, we then have equation for G atmosphere, which we go through, we have it, is the emission term is one, seven Boltzmann temperature of the sky. All right, we have those, but I want to rewrite this just to be complete. So this ends up being sky and we could put these two together. No, not, well not necessarily yet. And so we look at this and we still have this, this, and this. So temperature of the surface, the emissivity, and the sky's absorptivity. Okay. So any ideas how to get cause the emissivity of the water or the absorptivity of the water absorbing the sky's irradiation.
Joey says that it's a small object, large surroundings. You could make alpha equal epsilon. All right, so we're going to do that, but we're going to be even more specific in this chapter. So that was what we did kind of in chapter one. And we're going to say, so we're going to be able to have one more assumption that has meaning here. And we're going to say the water, a couple, is diffuse gray. Water is diffuse gray. Okay. So diffuse is uniform in all directions. So that allows us to say the emissivity is not a function of direction, and it's now just the emissivity at any given wavelength is equal to the absorptivity at any given wavelength. Okay. Gray is that the emissivity and the absorptivity as a function wavelength are independent of, of wavelength. Okay, so that ends up meaning we can say that the emissivity equals the absorptivity when it's gray. So diffuse gets us direction, gray gets us wavelength, okay? The other reason this is a, so, and it makes it that we would just kind of make everything diffuse gray, right? Because it simplifies things greatly, right? So. There's when this is valid is the other part. So the big thing for this independence is the temperatures are close. Because the absorptivity of the surface goes with though the temperature of the sky. And the emissivity of the surface goes with the temperature of the surface. It goes with the temperature of whatever that radiation is coming from. Well, the temperatures are close of the sky. And the surface. All right, while we're waiting though, we can look at this figure and we're right around, the sky is negative 40 and we're saying the water is going to potentially freeze, which is right around zero Kelvin. So we're, you know, pretty close to right here in our emissive power. So we're not changing the wavelength that much between those two surface between the sky and the the surface temperature so we're saying basically that the properties are not going to change of absorptivity or emissivity much because we're not changing the wavelength much okay so the that's why we can make that diffuse gray statement if we had a solar source of the sun 
that would be here and not if it wasn't instead of the sky you'd have 5800 and you have this huge difference in wavelength now that assumption wouldn't be as valid okay that wouldn't be valid so we could still say uniform in all directions but we couldn't say gray because the temperature of the sun and the surface are much different so sky and see the surface because they're they're both very close in temperature okay hopefully that makes sense all right so that gets us left with two unknowns now so we now we need either the absorptivity of the sky the or, or of the absorptivity of the water from the irradiation from the sky or the emission of the water or the emissivity of the water okay so we can get the water's emissivity from the table in the back actually let me do this in different color So table A11, we get the emissivity, it's 0.96 at 300 Kelvin. So that's around the temperature we're at, okay? So that means we have all the unknowns up here, and I can rewrite this showing what we ended up with in our equation. And now our only unknown is the temperature of the surface. So we get 268.5, which is less than 273 Kelvin. So the water will freeze. And then if windy, that was H was equal to 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin instead of five. We get 277, which is greater than 273. So this is the water Will not freeze. Okay. So we see this up above when we're looking at our schematic. That means the energy coming in, right? We're not. Um, removing as much energy as what's coming in, or I should say, uh, let's put let's put it this way instead: the portion of the radiation that's dealing with the negative 40 is influencing it more than the convection that's 20. Because convection, all, we labeled it out, but it's actually in because it's 20 degrees Celsius and then freezing on the surface, and that was figured out when our equation. It's you know it just ends up being this is higher than this, so this double negative ends up being a positive, so it's energy in from convection. Well, with still air, the convection is not so high that it's influencing it enough where the radiation is more being influenced, okay? But when we get 
windy air, now the convection in that 20 degrees Celsius air that's right above the pan influences it more and keeps the water from being frozen. Any questions? All right, so then let's do another example. Let's do 12.102. It says, Consider a thin, opaque, horizontal plate with an electrical heater on its backside. The front side is exposed to ambient air that is at 20 degrees Celsius and provides a convection heat transfer coefficient of 20 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Solar radiation of 800 watts per meter squared and an effective sky temperature of negative 40 degrees Celsius. And then they give us a schematic uh, and a plot of the reflectivity as a function of wavelength. Okay. And they ask us, what is the electrical power, watts per meter squared, required to maintain the plate surface temperature at uh, Ts equals to 60 degrees Celsius? The plate is diffuse and has the designated spectral hemispherical reflectivity. And that's the plot. That referring to that plot that was given. All right, so let's see what we got. We have a thin, opaque, horizontal plate, okay, has an electrical heater. It has ambient air, so T infinity is exposed at 20 degrees Celsius. We have a convection coefficient, average convection coefficient, 20 watts per meter squared Kelvin on that surface. And solar radiation. of 800 watts per meter squared. So that subscript S means solar, G is irradiation. It tells us the sky temperature is negative 40. The surface temperature 60. The plate is diffuse. All right, so we need to find the electrical power required to maintain the plate surface temperature. Okay, so finding the electrical power. Assumptions, I'm going to rewrite one of them. They told us the plate is diffuse. So I'm just going to rewrite that one. And the plate is opaque. Okay.
All right, schematics. All right, so we have this plate. It's an electrical heater. So that's our electrical heater. There's the plate. It's insulated. So I'm just redrawing and labeling what the schematic they give us in the book is. Okay. That's the temperature of the surface. Okay. We have the temperature of the sky. There's some solar irradiation. We have T infinity and our average convection coefficient. And then they also gave us a plot of wavelengths. versus reflectivity. Okay, and it goes from point two and then has, so this is of this plate, goes from point two and then goes up to point seven. Okay, and this is at two, mic, two microns. So this is our, right, this is reflectivity. And this is wavelength. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, so we're looking for this electrical power of the electrical heater, right? So we have this heater at the bottom. What, where do we want to begin? COE. Our ever favorite equation, the COE, the plane wall, right? So we have energy in, out, generated, stored, right? So we'll make our first easy one, steady state, right? All right, so then we need to draw everything on the schematic, right? I don't like to just put the terms into the COE. I like to have my schematic labeled and then just let the schematic tell me what we put on, what we put in the COE. Well, I'm gonna redraw this plate just because there's a lot of things going on here. And this is the actual drawing that was kind of in the 
book. So when I label it, I want to do a new one so I don't mess up what was given up there in this problem. All right, so we know we have an electrical heater, okay, and then it's insulated on the bottom. That's the surface temperature of our plate, right? Okay. All right, so now if this is our boundary, what do we want? What else do we have to label here? Maybe I'll show this one. What's our different forms of energy? What do we got to label? Absorption, emission, convection. All right, so we got Convection, mission, right? And then you said absorption, right? So is there just one absorption term? What's our sources or source of irradiation? So what's coming in and hitting the surface? Solar radiation. We have solar, okay. So then we put our absorptivity in front of it, right? Anything else? From the sky? Yeah, the sky also, okay. So solar's the sun, so that's the portion that, you know, comes in. The absorptivity is the portion of that energy that ends up going into the plate and changing as an energy in. Okay, but the sky is also emitting. So, you know, the sun can hit clouds and particles and water vapor, CO2 that's in the sky and, and the CO2 and all that stuff can absorb it and then emit at its temperature. Okay. So then it emits and that portion is what we're labeling here. So now we have our, our labels, okay? So now I feel comfortable writing our E in and E out and generate it. So energy in, I'll do the solar first here. Okay. Out, or also in we have the sky, right? Portion. And we have our emission. convection, and then are generated from electrical, which is equal to zero. So putting in our emission, and our Newton's law of cooling, so here we are, okay. So we're looking for electric power, right? We have T infinity, temperature of the surface was given, convection coefficient given. Right. Yeah. Again, surface given. We have our constant, so we don't have the emissivity, the absorptivity of our surface 
from the irradiation from the sky, the absorptivity from the solar irradiation of our that our plate has, and but we do have the solar's irradiation amount, you know, but we also don't have the irradiation amount from the atmosphere. Okay, so what do we do for this irradiation from the atmosphere? Can we assume something to help us out here for this assume, G? Assume black body. Of the sky, yep. So the sky is a black body, okay? So that allows us to say down here, or the sky emits as a black body. GATM. Is the emission of the sky as a black body, right? So ultimately, we're trying to get this. We still need emissivity, the absorptivity of the, the sky's irradiation, and the absorptivity of the solar radiation. So what can we do with those unknowns, right? Is there anything we can assume to help us at least with two of these three that we're ultimately trying to find. So it says it's diffuse. Are the temperatures close enough to say that it's diffuse and gray? Yes, and only though between the the sky and the emission okay so we can say not being fun all right so we can say diffuse gray actually let's that. Well, really, just it's ready to fuse, but diffuse gray for the absorptivity of the sky and the emissivity of the surface. So, this is how the surface absorbs the sky's irradiation is that absorptivity, and then how the surface emits its emission radiation portion, okay? And so we're saying diffuse gray for those two. So that's for just those two, because the solar, we can't, because the solar is 5,800, right?
right, so that gets us down to needing the absorptivity from the solar radiation and then just one of those, right? All right, so let's start with the solar absorptivity. Okay. Any questions so far before I move on here? Yeah, what is the limit of temperature difference that we should probably stick to for assuming diffusing? Um, well, in this case, we really didn't have to make this assumption, although it's going to you're going to find out that it's, it's as we work through this problem, it's an easy assumption to make. Um, but let's say because we were given how things change with wavelength, so we can get in that influence of whether we make, need to make that assumption or not, but it simplifies things. So the other one is thinking of this, right? It's more of thinking of how this emissive power changes. Because the source we have right now is this is our source of our emissions right around there and you know the sky is pretty near it okay so the properties of the plate would have to shift very drastically right around right between those two temperatures okay and we see in our example it's changes at two okay and it's really and most of both of those are going to be here okay so we're not getting a very difference in the emissive power and then how the surface properties change. Where if we were looking at the solar absorptivity, that's this that's this portion. You see how much different the wavelength influence is where it has a large portion at the slow wavelength, which you see here has we have our step change that then will influence it drastically, okay, of this, of the properties. So it's not, there's no necessarily hard and fast rule, I'll say, but it has to be very far in temp. When you're talking about radiation, it's typically very far in temperature as these curves are showing how they're changing. Hopefully that helps. With this, with this plot though, we didn't have to make this assumption at all. We could have just solved it for each of those temperatures and you'll see the way to solve it. We could have done it again for the sky and we could have done it for the emissivity. And we're gonna find out that the temperatures are gonna, or the property, hopefully that. I'm sorry if my my connection apparently is me. So let's continue. So so. Absorptivity. If we want to find absorptivity, it's you integrate from zero let's see, when in the irradiated function way. So those times okay, and then on the denominator is just the integration of that perfect absorber. Because 
absorptivity again is just if it's an absorptivity one, it's a perfect absorber. All right, if it's less than one, it's you know less than one. So that that's where this part's coming in. It's as it changes. If it was one, we have the numerator and the denominator being the same, and we'd have an absorptivity of one, right? Well, let's take this to, this is for any, now let's make it for solar, okay? Actually, look at this. So this is the absorptivity for any source, okay? If we make it solar, so now I have that subscript, right, for solar. We get to change what G is because that irradiation is coming from the sun, who is emitting as a black body at these different wavelengths at 5,800 Kelvin. Again, on the denominator is just that black body, inverting a black body emissive power. And the source is at 5800 Kelvin because it's the sun. We're integrating from zero to infinity wavelengths. Okay, so we changed this. to this, same with this, because it's solar, and the temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin. So the irradi irradiation coming in is counting because the sun is emitting at 5,800 Kelvin. Okay, so it'll get less intimidating. Um, but so we have this equation, and this now means we need to integrate from zero to infinity or absorptivity, but we don't have absorptivity. We only have reflectivity given to us above here. Can we get the absorptivity is a function of wavelength. Is there any way to use what we have from reflectivity to get absorptivity? Is it one minus? The reflectivity. One my uh, the absorptivity is yeah. one minus reflectivity. Okay, so it ends up being that, right? So we'll see. Yeah, so if we look at what we had before, we we kind of derived it already. Previous problem. Right here. Uh, right here. Okay, so we did it here. In the previous problem, I'm just going to rewrite a portion of it. So we have one equals portion getting reflected, absorbed transmitted and we can say that at, at any given wavelength also because you know any emission at a certain wavelength that's coming in it either has to get absorbed reflected or ended, okay and it's zero transmitted since we're opaque so that means 
the rotivity of any given wavelength is one minus the reflectivity at any given wavelength. All right, so I'm gonna just redraw this figure we have above, but with absorptivity instead to make it a little more straightforward. Two where it shifts. We have one minus point two. We get point eight at the top, and then it shifts. We have one minus set point seven. So we get point three. All right. Again, we look up here. All right, it's point 0.2, so the remainder that the thing is getting absorbed, so it's 0.8 or absorb. 0.7 or 70% is getting reflected, so the remainder is points get absorbed. Okay, so that means all we have is a step change. So, first off, is there any questions? All right, so when we now look at this integration here of the solar, we're integrating across wavelengths from zero to infinity. Well, our absorptivity of our plate only changes at two, okay? So we can just break up this integration into two steps, okay, two portions. We'll just integrate from here to here, and then from here to here. Okay, so that's gonna look like this. So from zero to two. And then fifty. So we've broken it up into one step for the before the step change and then after. Okay. The other thing we did in line that makes this much easier is we defined this and this. Okay, so we defined, each of, and those are just fraction. Oh, this, sorry, this should be, I apologize, this is zero to infinity. Zero to infinity. So that is the function of emissive power from zero to two from a black body of 5,800, and then for that one. And then this one is the fraction of emissive power from two to infinity for a black body at 5,800 Kelvin. And if you remember, that was emphasized it, or tried to emphasize it. It's in the table, and this is what, right here. 
I don't, that's the black body of Mrs. Tower at the temperature we have, and this is our spore, but this is our fraction. Okay, that's what I just, we just have in our integral, and that's, okay. And all we need to use is this table 12.2 and get wave time, wavelength times temperature to get the fraction of the emissive power that we have in this equation. So this simplifies greatly then to just the emissive, the absorptivity from zero to two. And then this is just your fraction of emissive power from zero to two microns. And then we have the absorptivity after the step change, and it's one minus that fraction, because that's the remainder. So that's the same as to infinity, one minus. Okay. Any questions? So again, this is our fraction. of emissive power you know, of solar emissive power because it's at 5,800 Kelvin. Solar emissive power emitted from zero to two. And this is our fraction Solar emissive bar from two to infinity. Okay. So that's kind of the key that understanding of taking it from here to this fraction. And we can do this for all the all those surface properties then and it simplifies the problem a great deal okay i'm going to actually stopping here because this is as far as i got in the first uh, section class earlier and um, so that means i'm going to extend the homework a little bit till later in the week so we're going to just finish up this problem it shouldn't take too long and then review because you have your last day three on Monday. Okay, so I'll, again, I'll move the homework to later this week. Um, so then you can uh, see what uh, the, the further steps in this, because it's a very important steps to go through before doing to under, so you have that time for, for your homework too. Okay, is there any questions? Um, I had one question that we can talk about after just in terms of the problem before this and like figuring out what that surface sure. temperature is when you okay. have to the fourth. Okay. It's iterative. Okay. So you would, so to the fourth, it's iterative. So you could rearrange this question for just one of the TSs, right? So just move TS on one side and you'll on the left side of the equation you'll have TS on the other side, whether it's the fourth, the one of the fourths or whatever. But you'll have TS, the surface temperature on the left side of the equation and the right side. So we have TS is on the right side of the equation, let's say, and use that to solve what it is on the left side. That's an easy way to viewing it. And then you reuse that and put it in again to the right side and just kind of iterate. You just keep through that calculation, if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that will. Yeah. Whenever you radiation with that temperature of the fourth and convection, 
right? You're, you got to, it's iteration. It's not a nice, simple getting it itself. So that's the easiest way to kind of solve those. All right. Any questions? All right. So then that's it. Uh, you guys have a Monday and Tuesday, and I'll see you virtually on Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.